our scripture reading, we will be by uh, Diego Chen. And he's going to be reading for us Psalms 1 and Psalms 24. Great Lord, everybody. Great Lord, everybody. Great Lord, everybody. It's a joy and a privilege to be here this morning. God is worthy, and we give praise, we give thanks, and we give glory, and we give honor. Our first question will be found in Psalms 1. Blessed, blessed is the one who does not step in the wicked, with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the, in the company of mockers. But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. Who yields its fruit in season and, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not, not so the wicked, they are like jack that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord, for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked leads to destruction. And our second picture is found in the book of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Anybody say that with me? The Lord is my shepherd. Let's say that one more time. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the, path, the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be afraid. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 And we celebrate, and, and of course, we celebrate the life of Mother Virginia Washington. I, I love her, and everybody in here loves her. Amen. 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 And that was her grandson. Hallelujah. <laughs> she would be proud of today. And right now, we're going to have another selection. So let's take in the rest of the Thank you. 
your grace, the eternal God and Father. We are praying to you. We praise you that you have made people to share life together and to reflect your glory in the world. We thank you now for Mother Washington, for all that we saw of your goodness and love in her life, and for all that she means to each one of us. We thank you, God. Hallelujah for that. Sister Washington served with God, and more than that, she had the Holy Spirit was on board in her life. The Spirit of Truth is what guided her, the advocate. Hallelujah, God in her. God was her helper. He was her counselor. He was everything that she needed in order to get to her life where she spent in with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if heaven is excited about it, surely High Street Church of God is excited about the morning, the life and the legacy of Sister Virginia Washington. Hallelujah, she's not born. There's a song that said, Oh, soldier, never die. They just kind of like fade away. She hasn't even faded away. She's in our memory bank, even now this morning. So we thank God for her. And we lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, that gives us people like a sister Washington. Hallelujah. And we just thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for her family, for the ALO. Just coach to the praise and lift up. 
on her mind as she was, uh, and it was a prize of roommate, I guess, <laughs> that uh, she had that on her mind. The Lord, I'm um, stretching out to do. And she left that testimony. You know, uh, when she could, she gave it. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask Sister Reed if um, she would share her thoughts uh, about Sister Washington. Amen. Amen. God be the Lord. He gives him all the honor and praise because of who he is and because of who we are in him. Yes. It gives me a great honor and privilege to speak about our dear sister mother, Washington. The little lady with the beautiful head of hair. Everybody always remarked about Mother Washington's beautiful hair. And as she grew older and it got greater, it began to get more and more beautiful. Sister Washington was a sweet little lady. And we used to compare her and Doris Miller to see who was the shortest. <laughs> they were the two shortest members in high school. Remember, remember Sister Washington as an usher when she first came to high school. She became an usher. She lived next door with the Huntleys, and it was always she was excited that she could walk to church and didn't have to catch the bus to get here. She was right next door and just had to walk out of her yard into high school. We remember Sister Washington as an usher, always on her post of duty. Never failed, and she enjoyed her job. I can see her down, walking up and down the aisle with her arm in the back, marching, marching people to their seat. She was a member of our Tuesday prayer and Bible study, which started of uh, I think it was 13 years before we disbanded. But Sister Washington was one of the faithful members of our Tuesday Bible study. And all times we would go from house to house with this study, and she would invite us to come into her home where we would come, read the Bible, study the Bible, and pray and eat. She always prepared something for us to have this Bible study. Which we always enjoy. I'll never forget the Tuesday when we went to her home. She was living in an apartment in West Philadelphia. We rang the doorbell, and she didn't answer. And we waited a while, continued to wait, so finally the people went to oh, unlock the door to see why she was not answering the door. And there we felt Mother Washington in the bathroom on the floor unconscious and we estimated she had been there for about 18 hours because we would meet every tuesday at 10 o'clock and when we got there her dinner was still in the oven and we said that was a miracle yes, in it itself yes. because we estimated she must have been having dinner around five o'clock in the evening and this was 10 o'clock the next morning when he got there. So Mother Washington had laid on her bathroom floor unconscious from I estimating five to six o'clock in the evening until 10 o'clock the next morning. And we were very, very disturbed and called the people in the parking that she was with and they came and got her. We were very, very upset to go there and find her in that condition. So we called for help and they came and helped us. We called her our miracle mother. <laughs> so we just thank the Lord for his grace and mercy, her sweet spirit. I can see her walking up and down the aisle of men with her arm in the back, escorting people to the seat. She loved her responsibility. <clears throat> Excuse me, back to usher. 
she will always be remembered for her love for God and her love for sin. And the saints love her. Yeah.
November 12, 2020. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me just add, since it's so much, I could not be here physically, but she is here virtually. So everybody just say thank you, Sister Philomon. Thank you, Sister Philomon. Praise the Lord. And we thank Sister, uh, Sister Shane for being here. Um, and now we would like to have some remarks from um, the family. We know Sister uh, uh, Mother Washington cared about our family as her uh, giving testimony that she prayed for her family. Family was very important. And we thank God uh, for our family members. And again, Sister Washington cared about our family. So we're going to have remarks from Sister Peggy Green Brinkley. Sister Brinkley. Say amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Let us be glad and be joyful. to be here to speak on behalf of my family and my extended family. When Mom Susan, we call Mom Susan, she asked would I speak, I said, sure. I didn't know the children I was going to speak, I didn't even tell them. And I said, Lord, I had something to say about Mom Susan. Mom Susan and Sister Grandma Washington, or Mother Washington, what we call it. We call it Grandma Washington, <laughs> if I may. Thank you, Lord. We honor the grandparents who tended us so well, pauses us as we pray again, as we pray again, and perhaps bless the bigger than life, compassion, who helped us bridge home and away, childhood and maturity, in their footsteps, you made the journey. Thank you for such heritage and a day on which to express your grat our gratitude for having her in our life. Lord, Thank you for the extended family you placed us in. I know that none of us are here by accident, even though it may seem as we are a strange collection of personality kinds. Help us appreciate one another, which she has, for our uniqueness. I love you for that. Lord, but let us also find strength in holding hands in the circle of faith for the Jew who created us and who created us and put us together. We thank you for bringing us together as a family and as you pray and as we pray for knowledge and welcome us into your family. Lord, we thank you for being a part of this. For many of you don't know, I'm Sharice's mother and uh, the other grandchildren are Channing and Cameron and my her sister Chanel. But for all of us, this is our family and I thank you for letting me speak on behalf of Mother Washington. I love you. I love you. I love you. And remember her in spirit and in love and in service in this church because I know she loves High Street. Amen. I thank you. And now we're going to um, have some remarks from our grandsons. Amen. Amen. And so, and they, they're both looking to see who goes first. <laughs> So I'm gonna call on uh Daniel first. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Yes. Let the church say amen one more time. Yes. More importantly, let the church say glory to God. Glory to God. We are here to celebrate the life of Mother Virginia Washington. Well, we call her grandma. See, to me, I thought she was one of the in Washington. I called her grandma, the mama called her grandma. <laughs> Every, everybody knew her. Every, yeah, everybody knew her. I knew her. The mama knew her. Even, even mom knew her. <laughs> and, and, and grandma, one of the in Washington, was a sweet lady. She never 
never complain about anything. And we celebrate our life today. We celebrate our life today. We give God praise because Grandma is in a better place. She's in heaven. But she's still looking down on all of us. Not just me, but she's looking down on all of us. And, and she's still rejoicing. So as we celebrate the life of Mother Virginia Washington, let's continue to give God praise. Thank you. Sweet, she was short. <laughs> Yellow had a very special relationship with Grandma. One probably wouldn't say that she was so sweet that uh, you were little, and the other would just call up to Grandma's arms. She would just, just hold her, you know. And Grandma never really had that. Kind of relationship, but I always really appreciated that the yellow had that relationship. And, um, and so, with me, uh, when we really got to know Grandma, I think it took me a long time to realize how amazing she was and, and how much. She had been involved in our lives. So before I knew anything that was going on when I was very, very, very little, she was involved in our family life and supporting and helping mom and even my dad and our family. And later on, we lived with grandma. Uh, and all throughout college, and even when I came back from college, grandma was there. So like my whole life, grandma was there is a little tiny person um, who, who gave so much. And um, I mean, like, what could he do? She is a grandma, right? So, but you, you kind of think, well, that's what she's supposed to do. But she didn't have to. She didn't have to open up her home to us to live there until forever, if that's what we needed to do. Um, she didn't have to tolerate me because my opportunity for how was not as. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you, brother Sam. Whatever you want to call it, I wasn't, I wasn't there at that point. And um, so she tolerated me, and what y'all think? She's all sweet and everything. It's nice, <laughs> but grandma, <laughs> she knew how to you know, raise her voice too, and she knew how to um, say what was what, like a grandma should. So she helped raise me and my brother. And I don't even know how to thank her for that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was that as I got older and looked at, um, looked at uh, how mom uh, took care of grandma, it was just like, uh, such an inspiration for those who, I guess, don't know. Mom took care of her mom for years and years and years. And as she declined, sorry, my grandma declined, 
she can take care of herself. Mom was like right there. Yeah. Like, and, and, and quite honestly, up to the very end, every moment yeah. she was there. Uh, so I just, I'm really amazed at mom for the way she took care of her mom. And I hope that at some point, Especially after asking the Lord, I joined her raising with me and my 
uh, drawing the Lord. Am I right today? Mom is a part of not she's a big reason why that is. And I'm going to that Dalano did a part of the but I really want to thank the pastor and I and family for honoring mom. Right able to do the traditional thing. But this means a lot. Yes, she loved I she loved the pastor. <laughs> and it is just warms my heart that he would honor her this way. And I thank my friends for coming. I have two friends here. Thank you. Other than my Sharice's family became our family. It's six little children of grandchildren of her, and now they're my grandchildren. They call me mom Susan. That was very busy for some years. And she and uh, Chanel is my second daughter in law. <laughs> so I thank you for blending with us. And mom, but did you can go to, to mom's house and and we meet there, have dinner, and just kind of fellowship since um, uh, CJ's the oldest, he was like that. All through those years, thank you. Again, thank you, High Street. It was a blessing. We love Mother uh, Vasquez and me. I guess I was a, a newcomer, and uh, uh, I love Mother Washington. Uh, and, and everything I heard, I agree with. She was a sweet, sweet person. <laughs> and I just love to hear her testify and pray. Uh, so that's the memory that I had. I would like for uh, Sister Sharice to come and read from me. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, again, that this time, this one is from my heart. And uh, some parts of it, you're going to recognize um, the very beginning you organized. I just want to say that um, I lost all of my grandmothers um, when I, when my mom and I got married at that time. Um, I had a grandfather, and he didn't have a grandfather. So, we were able to really embrace uh, each other's grandparents. So the grandma was my grandmother. She did she treated me, you know, equally as um, her grandsons. And so um, I just really appreciate just the beautiful spirit um, that she extended to me. And I feel like she extended a part of her legacy um, to me, not only in Milano, but just in terms of the ways that. She blessed me and loved me as a woman, and so um, and as a grandchildren. So um, this is to give her honor. <clears throat> Grandma, the abiding, silver gray hair, neatly combed in place. There were four generations. Other than on her face, she was so wise, no surprise has her eyes. She seen it all. Grandma, the abider, could quietly and contently sit with or without someone beside her, in her abiding seat with her arms resting and her small feet, sometimes bending or folded slightly and the feet. Grandma, the abider, in a chair, at a table, in a hallway, or sitting on a church pew, 
when she prayed that abiding place converted into a royal throne room of accessing heavenly grace. Grandma, the abider, not very tall in stature at all, but yet Grandma, the abider, was strong, hiding in the shadow of the Almighty. Grandma, the abider, was soft-spoken, but her abiding in prayer voice to God's ear and to God's ear and heart was bold, proud, and loud, and in his eye gave her favor choice. Grandma, the abider, was a woman of few words, except on the telephone. And in prayer, she declared, she dared to declare, Lord, your will be done as it is in heaven on this here earth. Grandma, the abider, was not a long attending school writer, yet through her abiding, she was able to get and give valuable lessons of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Grandma, the abider, was not, wasn't a fist fighter, but in prayer, she had the eye of a tiger, believing and trusting in the one who said, vengeance is mine, I will be paid. Grandma, the abider, wasn't all about making a big fuss and having a title, but she, but she defended Jesus, the one who sits closer than any brother, and in turn, Grandma, the abider, discovered the only true one and only provider. Grandma, the abider, wasn't about fortune and fame, but through her acceptance and abiding in Jesus the Christ, she was able to inherit the legacy of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, whereby she was given access to the name of a every famed name. Grandma, the abider, might not have joined many known secular organizations, but through Jesus' agency, she became a member of High Street Church of God, you see, on earth. And a member now of those walking on the high street of gold in heaven. She's a member of the royal priesthood of holy nation, the Alpha and the Omega, the great I am incorporation. Grandma, the abider, might not have experienced her name in the limelight, but since she chose Jesus, she chose to walk and become a reflection of the mighty light. Hey! And she received her name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Grandma, the abider, you may no longer be physically abiding with us, but your abiding presence lives on as to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Also, like you once did, we, the loved ones who remain, must continue to occupy and abide in them, and them in us, bearing the fruit of faith. Grandma, we abide We appreciate the way you model how to abide, pray, and follow Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, all while letting patience have her perfect work, her perfect turn, as we wait for our better days. Grandma, the abider, we miss you dearly, but we take pride in knowing you are in a better abiding place, where there's no more crying and no more dying, and you can see the Lord, your abiding provider.
Well, we have been, uh, it has been said that um, Sister Washington, Mother Washington, loved high school and loved her pastor. And I want you to know, and I say this honestly, and I say it from the bottom of my heart, that we have a pastor that loves his congregation. And, um, and because he loves her, it was on his mind to have this. And so I, I just want to make a shout out to how uh, glad I, I am to say that Reverend David E. Griffin is my pastor. And I can give it to you. Well, let's keep praying to the Lord. It's truly the day the Lord has made, and we rejoice. Yes. We are glad in it. Um, we had no choice as far as I was considered. Uh, you know, we, we have to make sure that no matter what we are faced, that we would allow the Lord to work it out for good. And uh, without my prompting of very first service back on the first Sunday, um, October 3rd, uh, Bishop Branham spoke from Romans 8, 28, that God will work all things for good. And he stressed a, a, a lot of his message on the three letters of the word all that small word that meant so much and how we understand it. And today I am happy that uh, COVID-19 is part of all. So no matter what we've had to suffer or endure uh, or not be able to do because of the experiences that we have had with this pandemic, we are sure that God is still working out all things so that for us, the redeemed, the believers, the ones who are called, we are the beneficiaries of the goodness of God. I say that in this instance because our dear sister Virginia Washington was one of three members that went home to be with the Lord during the time of our church building being closed. And I say that purposely because the church was never closed. Hallelujah. Amen. The church cannot be closed. No pandemic can close the church. But the city forbid us from gathering. And even if the city didn't, I don't think any of you were going to come up. So uh, we were blessed to be able to transition to Zoom. And because we have done that and we've become so proficient at it, still learning some of the nuances, but today, Sister Philmon and others are able to be watching what we are doing because we, don't, we now have a Zoom platform. We, we would probably never have gone there had it not been for COVID. So in all things, God is working out some good for us. Uh, so December, last December, the Lord called home Sister Virginia Washington. And that was a little bit of a tough time for us to have to face the fact that she was no longer with us, but we couldn't have a service to honor her memory. And so the Lord put it in my heart that whenever we were able to reopen and, and have an in-service uh, gatherings that we will honor those who have gone home. And this is the first of two because the third person that passed, passed uh, in September and we were able to reopen in time to honor the, the memory of our dear brother Charles Downs. <laughs> One month from today we will honor and who was already mentioned because it was a competition to see who was the shorter member of High Street. And these two that the Lord took home 
canceled that whole idea of who the shortest among them. So the Lord took home the two shortest members of High Street uh, and taken home Sister Virginia Washington, who I believe did win that contest. <laughs> and uh, on December 14th, we will be honoring and celebrating the life of our dear Sister Doris Miller. So she came second. But this is also a time for us to rejoice because the lives of the saints and the gifts that they have given to us must continue to be with us as we journey on beyond their time in our presence. The Lord gave us Sister Virginia Washington so that we now can live even more abundantly because we've seen a woman of small stature and a woman that, that was a bit unassuming do great things and the Lord did great things for her. And as we remember her today, I will share some of my experiences with her. But I want you to know that she loved her past. Uh, and she made it known publicly and privately. Uh, we talked many times. She would call, or I would call her. And also, as she got uh, to the point where uh, she wouldn't be able to come as often, or then to the point where she couldn't come at all, and we would go and visit her, uh, I remember going to that nursing home and I was being polite and I allowed everyone to, to, to greet her and say hi. And she was very cordial and receptive, but then she turned and said, where is Pastor? <laughs> and I said, I'm here. She says, come on over and give me a kiss. Uh, we did that every time we met. And um, I've been blessed to be the pastor of High Street. And I've been blessed probably mostly for the great older saints of High Street who have shown what love really is. Not just loving the pastor, but loving God. They've shown what it is to love their Savior. And, and they've lived lives that are exemplary. And for me being here without my mom, and that was when she was alive, but was without her presence. Now she's gone to heaven and still without her presence. But um, the Lord has given me a lot of mothers here at High Street, of which Mother Washington is now being celebrated. Join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. And we thank you for the time that you will speak to your master. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless me honor me, that your Holy Spirit will be strong so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. You are our God and our Redeemer, we pray. Amen. Amen. If I may say, um, I tried to title this and I said, Prayer Warrior Called Home. Amen. Who will take her place? I want to just read a passage that's in the book of James, chapter 5. I'm reading it first from the New Living Translation. I'm reading from verse 13 to 16, and it reads, Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. 
And if I can repeat verse 16, but from the King James Version, it says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It is always interesting when we read the Bible in the many versions that are available. The more modern versions make it easier to read. But I think the King James Version gives a, a sense of authority and power that, that maybe it's because we older saints grew up with it that we feel that way. But I think it uses words that causes you to have to think about the meanings. Because it uses words that are not in our current um, vocabulary. We don't, we don't say effectual too often. We don't say fervent too often. And we surely don't say avail. <laughs> but today, I want to focus on those three words. Because effectual, as I looked it up, says successful or producing the desired result. Fervent meaning having or displaying a passionate intensity. Availed meaning to help, to benefit, or to accomplish. And so when I reread that 16th verse, that second part says, the successful desired result of passionate prayer of a righteous person benefits and accomplishes what it is set out to do. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. Our dear mother, and we are the righteous, uh, Paul has given us that definition, and we can run with that, that we are the righteous, we are the cause of God, that has been imputed to us because of the grace of God and because of faith. We are the righteous. We are also called the circumcision. We, we are the ones that God has died for. We are the redeemed. We are the blessed. We are the ones who are walking in the light. And our dear sister surely exemplified what it was to be called of God. And her gift, as we have come to, a, to know it, has been the effectual, fervent prayer that she offered up on all of our behalf and on many others. That, that ability to successfully get and hear from heaven what we are asking because she was endowed with the blessing to continuously pray. She prayed without ceasing. She prayed in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. She prayed all day long, and she prayed for us all. Prayer is what she did. I remember when our sister was no longer actively running and walking like she used to, she took to the telephone. And, you know, if she was younger and these were different times, she would have taken to the internet and she would have been able to have a podcast and do all the modern things that, that, that people today would do. But she did it in the time that she knew. You know, she didn't know the internet. I know for you younger people, you think that it was always internet. You think it was always a cell phone. You never knew when there wasn't a cell phone. But let me tell you, our sister had to dial a dial phone that you don't know how to use. <laughs> if I were to give you one now and ask you to make a call, you probably will not be successful for quite some time. I, I read recently that at MIT, which is the most prestigious school in the world for technology, at MIT, some, uh, this is about 15 years ago, but well, it's probably like 20 years ago now. Uh, at MIT, a professor came into the class and brought in a, a, a device that he called a phone. And he asked them, he plugged it into the wall, and he asked them to see who would be, the, who would be able to figure out 
how to make a call, and he gave them a number. And if they called this number successfully, they would get some prize. It was a pretty big prize, because you know, MIT is pretty prestigious. So let's say you're going to get $50,000 if you can figure out how to make a call within 10 minutes. 25 minutes later, no one was able to make a call. And so the professor went up, took the phone into his hand, dialed the number, and showed them how easy it used to be to make a call on a phone with a dial. Well, I can tell you if the professor had asked Mother Washington to make that call, she would have been rich. <laughs> because she knew exactly how to use the phone and a touch tone phone. Maybe if you gave her a cell phone, she would quit at making phone calls and, and following up on members and praying for the sick. And, and she followed her call. And, and that's why today we we have an array of some pictures to remind us of of, of who she was and look, what she looked like and the beauty that she possessed, the smile that she carried, the warmth that she wore and that you felt as you approached her. Or their sister was a loving and wonderful personality. I'm sorry that Brother Delano had to hear some of the tougher voices that she could possess, <laughs> but I know he brought it on himself. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Sister Philmon in her time that quoted the scripture, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, right. Blessed are the dead which died in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. Or their sister is at rest from her labor. Now we are doing a memorial to her, so we know she's at rest. Her body is not laid here, and we're not looking at the remains of her body, which kind of makes this an easier task. You know, no one is coming up and to her briar and and been struck with grief by looking at her. None of these photos, I haven't looked at them. I only know one of those photos, and but I don't believe any of them are photos of her laying horizontally. So we can celebrate life. We can celebrate that God has promised us that that we will never die. That, that yes, our bodies will decay. From dust we came and from dust we will return. Yes, there's coming a time if the Lord will come first where all of us will pass from life to death, but see, that's not the end. Because we are not passing from life to death, but we're passing from life through death and from death to life again. Yeah. Because we will live with him. We will reign with him. She is somewhere, I wish I could tell you where she is. I don't really understand where she is yet. I know she's not quite in glory because there's coming a day where we all are gonna get ushered up together. But I know she's nowhere down in our earth. That's not where she is. That's where the remains are. But our dear sister is at, in, a, in existence in a place of peace and tranquility, a place that, that, that is of comfort and joy, a place that if she could come back, she would decline. Because it's a, she's been here, she would will, she will look up earth and say, been that, done that, don't want to go back there again. She's only hoping for that final day when we will catch up with her. The dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who remain will be caught up 
and we will all be ushered into glory. There is a, an image of this in the Bible that's referenced with Lazarus, not the Lazarus that, that was Jesus' friend, but there was a rich man and a poor man exchange, and, and Lazarus was at the gate and was a beggar, and, and then both of them died. And it so happens that they somehow could see each other, and the rich man was crying out because he was an agony. And he was saying, if you could let this poor man Lazarus just give me a drop of water, that will help. And if you can't do that, maybe you could send him back and tell him to warn my brothers not to come this way. Because when, whenever we have a home going service, I'd like to, to remind you that uh, you don't have this anymore on the planes and the restaurants, but we used to have this in the day where you will walk into an establishment or you get on the plane and it will say smoking or no smoking. <laughs> and I never chose the smoking section, I can tell you that. I don't want to be in the smoking section. I don't want to be anywhere near the section that has smoke or fire. I want to be in the glory section. And our dear sister has already joined the heavenly band and she is rejoicing in glory. Mother Washington used prayer because in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 it says, the weapons of all warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and and, 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 and accompanying that scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, it says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we are wrestling against principalities and powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, we, we too often waste our time and spend our time fighting the person in front of you. But we need to fight the spirit in front of you. Don't let the neighbor who is abusing your trash can get you so upset that you want to dump your trash on their driveway. Because it is not that neighbor that you are really fighting. You're fighting an evil spirit that has possessed that neighbor that will let that neighbor think of you as less than human. And that's why that neighbor is trying to abuse whatever they're doing to you. See, we, we, we these days, we are so polarized these days that we're starting to fight people. And people are wanting to fight us. Sometimes they want to fight you because of the color of your skin. Sometimes they want to fight you because of where you vote on your back. Imagine that January 6th is gone and we're still talking about it in the news cycle every day. Now, I don't want to suggest that you should put things behind you and never talk about them again. I surely believe that the people of January 6th who, who were part of this insurrection should be punished on earth. But my prayer is not, Lord, please kill them. My prayer is, Lord, please save them. My prayer is to pray against the powers of the evil and the dark powers of this world. We, we can't, listen, I am not holding up any flappers and I'm not going to DC to fight against anyone. I'm going to fight on my knees. I don't speak against people who want to do their civic duty. But are we willing to do our spiritual duty? What God has called us to do is to be like Mother Washington, to be prayer warriors. You know what a prayer warrior is? Someone who is fighting the fight of faith. Someone who is battling for truth and right. Someone who is praying for victory. And someone who is convinced that they're called and that the, the weapon that they have will conquer Satan. We can get a prayer through. We, we at High Street are known 
to be able to get a prayer through. There are people who don't even know us and they call on us. Remember, we were just praying for a lady in Canada who was who, whose nephew was with cancer and others in their family. And we prayed and prayed. We can get a prayer through. Sister Washington knew the, the, the power of prayer. And as Sister Reed mentioned when she was speaking, I, I believe it was in 2006, family can forgive me if I'm off, but um, I remember well because I was in a hallway at Anderson, Indiana, attending ISTE, its 50th anniversary celebration or classes. And I got a call that says the same things that Sister Reed mentioned earlier, Sister. They, they found Sister Washington. She was unresponsive. She's unconscious. She was in the hospital. And uh, the doctors don't think she's going to pull through. That, those are the words that came that, that I remember from this exchange on the telephone. But I remember the power of the Holy Spirit speaking, the voice speaking into me right immediately. And the voice says, No. Don't worry. This is not the end. Amen. The voice says she's going to pull through. And I'm very scared to repeat that voice when it says things like that to me because I, 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 don't, want, I don't want it to be my personal desire that's causing me to hear things and therefore thinking that the Lord has said to me, say this, I want to check in with the Lord, but I was at ISTE and we were just in such a powerful time of fellowship with the Lord. I didn't even have time for the enemy to creep in to deceive my hearing. So I knew I was hearing from God and I was able to repeat immediately that God was with her and God was going to bring her through. That was 2006. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. And this prayer warrior, who had constantly been engaging in prayer warfare, was now the recipient of the effectual fervent prayers of her partners, of her friends, of her fellow worshipers. Who, who can now say, Lord, have mercy on Sister Virginia Washington. Before I left Anderson, the doctors released her from the hospital, but not with any good news. They sent her home and they said, let the family gather because that's it. And I love when doctors say these few words. There's no more that we can do. Or we've done all that we can do. I love when doctors say that because that tells me that I can move straight from the physical doctor to Dr. Jesus. I know that, that, that the report of the Lord that I am going to believe is not the report that comes through the physical doctor but comes through Jesus, the great physician. And the great physician, if he says, I'm healed, I'm healed. If he says, I've got the victory, I've got the victory. And, and, and the great physician said that Mother Washington was healed. So we journeyed back from Anderson to Philadelphia. And when we got here, Mother Washington was doing a little better. Well, that was 2006. You know she didn't die in 2006. <laughs> or seven. Or eight. <laughs> and you can count with me all the way through, right? Or their sister journeyed for more than a decade beyond what the doctors have given her because Dr. Jesus was the church. And when Jesus says it, I believe it because it's got to be so. My God has never lied, cannot lie, will not lie. And if God tells you that you are healed, you are healed. Mother Washington was able to come in, and we didn't, we didn't say, you know, I wanted to save Mother Washington's seat, and I totally forgot. <laughs> I was going to save Mother Washington's seat today because I didn't want anyone sitting in Mother Washington's seat. And guess what? The Lord has saved Mother Washington's seat. 
So the Chanel, you are next to Mother Washington and Chief. I just want you to know that Sister Washington still has her seat right there today. Everybody has sat all around her. Brother Reed is in front of her. You know, people are behind her. All around her. But nobody is sitting in Mother Washington's seat today. And I didn't plan that. <laughs> I was part of most of the planning of everything that happened today, but I didn't plan that. I couldn't have avoided that unless I had remembered to come in today and put something there to say, don't sit here because we want to honor Mother Washington. But she went from the one who carried the burdens of others to allowing Jesus to carry her. And I always remember my favorite poem is the poem footprints in the sand. And you all know it, so I can just get quickly to the point that this person is journeying through time or looking back at their life on time, and they see two sets of footprints. And then they come to this one place that they see is the worst of their time in their life. It is a time that was tough. It's a time that they weren't sure that they could survive. It was a time that Mother Washington was left unconscious for hours. Sister Reed estimates that 18 hours are a great forensic scientist. Sister Reed can say it's 18 hours that, that she was unconscious. But we know that even be, beyond that, she was taken to the hospital and she was still unresponsive. And the doctors released her and said, we've done all that we can do. And yet the Lord says, that's all you can do. But that's not all I can do because I'm Alpha and I am Omega. I am the resurrection and I am life. And I say that Mother Washington still has others to pray for. And she came and sat in that chair, and we would give her a microphone, and she would pray from that seat. And, this, and let me tell you, we talk about Mother Washington's voice. Yeah, it was, a, it was a small voice, but when she started praying, let me tell you, that voice wasn't so small, because while she was praying, the Lord would anoint her voice, and, and, and that microphone that we gave her, we would have to almost turn it down. Because she can really pray. But now it's time for us to stand and take the place of this great warrior. This great warrior who has walked before us, who has blessed us with her charm, with her beauty, with her loveliness. You know, I dare anyone to stand today and give me anything negative about Mother Washington. Or we will all boo you if you try. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when my wife had kidney surgery. And you know who prayed for my wife? Mother Washington. Again, don't get upset, folks. Well, if you want me to honor you today, then you just gotta die and I will call you. Because <laughs> I know how many of you pray for her during that time as well. If you, if you want me to call you by name, you know what you gotta do. But that was a tough time for us. Our boys were quite young. Little Michael would not leave the bedside of his mom unless I was right there. If I walked out the room to go to the bathroom, he would run into the bedroom just to be with mom. He, 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 was, a, he was attached to mom for that period of time. And while we were optimistic, you know, the doctors didn't give us any death statements, you know, everything was going to be fine, her kidney was going to be saved, and, and she was going to survive, so that was not on our minds, but let me tell you, when you're a dad and you've got a sick mom and two little boys, you still got to think about a lot of stuff. 
Mother Washington call and let's say, Pastor, I'm praying for you. You're going to be all right. You don't know how those few simple words cheer you up. Because see, it comes at the moment when the enemy was trying to get into your head. Because you know, the battlefield is always up here in your head. And, and just when, when you look at your wife and you look that she doesn't look so great and, and she's, you know, she's going through and you got to figure out a way there's not much you can do. I'm no doctor. Just when the head was about to be invaded, the phone rings and the Holy Spirit speaks through Mother Washington to just say, Pastor, I'm praying for you. Amen. Since we need prayer warriors, we have a room over here that used to be called a prayer room that we renamed it the war room after the movie came out. It's all about praying, it's all about fighting, it's all about going in and, and, and pressing your way through. If Mother Washington was mobile, she would be in there. The one who prayed for the service, prayed for everything that was going on, and for everyone who needed prayer. Whenever we had an issue of, that would call to the church and a prayer chain would start, it was in between Mother Mother Reed, sorry, Sister Reed, and Mother Washington. Those, those were the first two on the prayer chain, and it didn't need to go much further than those two. Mother Washington was involved in every prayer request of every person that has come through high school. Saints, the Lord has taken his precious warriors home. But that leaves an opportunity for someone to step up and take this challenge. And I want to encourage you who remain to take the challenge. Yes, we can talk all the great stuff and laugh and rejoice that Mother Washington was also wonderful. But who will take her place? As you listen to the Holy Spirit, as He's speaking to you now, you don't have to confess to me that you are taking Mother Washington's place. It's between you and the Holy Spirit, but are you willing to step up to the plate and take over at that from Mother Washington? I think it's, it's about time. And I think the time is now for the challenge that has been thrown out for you to pick it up. And if you're not sure, just Talk to the Lord. You don't have to be old to be, you don't have to be another mother or father, Washington, you know. You don't have to wait till you get to 80. Mother Washington wasn't a prayer warrior when she got into her 80s and 90s. She was a prayer warrior when I came to high street. And, and she was here before I came to high street. So she was a, a prayer warrior. I'm sure in her 60s and 70s, and I don't know how far back it went, but she has been, as all of my life that I've known her, which is over 30 years, she's been a prayer warrior. So don't feel like you have to wait. You don't say, oh, that can't be me because I'm not old enough to be called Mother anything. You don't wait till you call Mother Washington. She was called Mother Washington because she worked hard in the kingdom. And she was loved so much that everybody then gravitated to her and called her mother. But she was Sister Washington at one time. And while she was Sister Washington, she was still praying. Before she got this title of Mother Washington, she was just Sister Washington. And she was still effectually and fervently praying. And most of us, if not all of us, are recipients because her prayer, the effectual, fervent prayer of one righteous woman has availed 
in our lives. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep you, and may you continue to honor God as you honor this great one who has walked before us. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The fervent prayer of a righteous man yeah. So we thank God that we had a chance to know Mother Washington and to know a woman of prayer. And we're going to have prayer and we'll be finished after our closing song. Amen. Yeah. Let's all stand. Oh God, we thank you and we praise you that we have had in our lives the opportunity to know Mother Washington and that we have had another chance to hear your word, God. And that we have been reminded that all things work together for you. And that we have accepted, I hope many of us have accepted the challenge to become a woman or a man of prayer. And so, God, I ask that you would continue to be with us and help us to love one another and to do the things that are pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we're going to sing, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 